found it. This should be the one. It turns out that... I have a strange way of confirming everything he has told us. What is that? What is it? A record from a personal collection. It was tucked away in a corner. You should take a look. Is this a fairy tale? Who wrote it? I authored this record myself. Huh? You wrote a fairy tale that somehow has something to do with the balladeer? So wait, this is some kind of secret backup save? So Nahida... Oh, oh my head hurts. Oh, I so hate time travel. When combined with the Traveler's narrative, it's clear that this story is an allegory. Everything in it is a symbol for something else. Hold on. So this record survived from... the... past past? Yes. Any information about the Balladeer or the Kabuki Mono and other records will have been changed. But I wrote this story in a way that means it was left intact. Changing the information in Ermansoul changes to that. But Ermansoul can't change information that was well hidden in advance. I guess I must have written this story as a backup before the Balladeer entered Ermansoul. That's incredible! What a great idea! And sending the Traveler into Ermansoul with the Balladeer must have been a further precaution. I knew he'd remember everything. This story is abstract enough that it still resonates with the present information recorded in Ermansoul. But if we connect all the different pieces together, the true story that emerges is the one he told us. The now erased life of the Balladeer. There was once a lone monster draped in fox fur. The monster found a family of foxes, joined them, and they became friends. The monster lived with the family day and night, and everyone treated it as one of their own. Okay, see, this is, I was hoping I would kind of, kind, of, kind of get a little bit because I want to check now the character that kind of talk about the bad deal. Is he removed from the... Voice lines? Once in a while, the monster would take off its fox for at night and lament to itself as it gazed at its reflection in the water. I am a monstrosity, yet they are too foolish to see it. I pity them. Oh, come on, Baladi. How arrogant you are. But the monster soon found solace when another came to live among the foxes who was not their kin. A kitten, carved from the wood of a white tree who had been abandoned by the humans. Oh wait, this could be the doctor and the kitty to be the one the... Man, look at this nightmare. The kitten too wished to become a fox. But its tail was too slender, and it could not grow a coat of richly colored fur. Yet when the other foxes saw this, they spoke words of comfort to the kitten. Even without a tail and fur like ours, you are still one of us. Furious at this happy resolution, the monster lit a fire on the mountain. The terrified animals panicked as the fire spread. The only way to extinguish the flames was to make a sacrifice. Wait, is this a Niwa? What is called Niwa? I think it's Niwa. Wow, that way. Imagine, okay, let's keep this little note for a second, okay? When Dotto is gonna be like the main antagonist for a later game. Let's consider this. What he's doing now. Do you think they're gonna go away doing the same thing with Dotoy? I really ask you guys this. 
A gray fox stood up and addressed the monster. It said, You are the cleverest among us. Surely you can help us find a way to solve this. The monster smiled, led the fox toward the fire, and murdered it. The gray fox's heart was turned into a beautiful drop of water, clear, spotless, and pure. The monster gave the heart of water to the kitten, telling him, The foxes have decided. You are the one who must be sacrificed. Take this, quench the flames, and die for your fox kin. Man, I really want to say that this artwork is really cool. Like, why can we, we actually have this kind of artwork in when it's fade to black that say have text in the black skin? The fire was extinguished, but the kitten lived. It left that side of the mountain and found a little bird who had a broken wing. The two promised they would spend their whole lives together, but the little bird did not have long left to live. It passed away soon after. After burying the bird, the kitten left the mountain for good. Oh, this is the chair. But I, uh, Mihoyo, again, I'm gonna switch between Mihoyo and Hoyo. Put a button to hide the text. Well, is there a command? And I don't know about it because I really want to see the artwork here. Never again would it cherish a single creature, nor a single blade of grass that stood on that mountain. The kitten spent the nights wandering aimlessly, gnashing its teeth at the moon. How it wished to swallow the moon and devour the moonlight. If the world could only return to darkness, then it would finally be peaceful and content. I will become the new moon, the answer to everything. Then, no one will know that there were once birds, foxes, and cats in this world. And no one can know that they were different. We solved it! Man, this was something. Okay, I'm gonna give you a point for this, for us. <sighs> I remember now. This is not just the Balladeer story. It is his very own memories. I made a backup so that it would be preserved no matter what happened. To become a god, he was experimented on and modified countless times. It was brutal torture, and the only reason he was able to survive is that he was a puppet. This memory was extracted from him by the scholars. Presumably, they kept it to have something to defend themselves with. Creating a deity was just the first step. Some of them wanted to be able to control it. That's why they backed up his memory for later use. I buried it deep inside one of my own dreams, and then hid it inside an allegorical story so that it wouldn't be altered. So, we gonna rebuild the scam once? This is kind of what he's kind of alludes to. We really gonna rebuild Scamus. So, technically, Scamus is actually dead, gone, and we gonna build a new Scamus. Again, I'm not sure what to say. It's like. It's hard to believe that this person really existed, let alone that he tried to. Get rid of us on more than one occasion. Paimon has no memory of him at all. He completely vanished like a puff of smoke. The Balladeer agreed to help me look for information about the Descenders. And although he was unsuccessful, he still helped you. 
Before he vanished, he confirmed an important detail. That Conria was where your twin first came into this world. We still don't know how the change to Ermin Soul will affect the senior ranks of the Fatui, but in all likelihood, they won't even remember their own harbinger. Yeah, actually, I'm not gonna be surprised because. Actually, I'm not be surprised if the photo I have, they have to some kind of backup. I kind of feel that this though, may may remember. He's the one with the mask, right? I mean, I have to watch that trailer again. It sounds like Paimon wouldn't like this guy a whole lot if he was still around. But still, Paimon doesn't like the way it all ended that much better. This is why Wisdom alone cannot answer all our questions. We look, we see, and we comprehend, but the question still troubles us. So the answer is not everything. People yearn to find the truth and then conquer the troubles they face. When you give someone the truth, you give them a chance to choose their own destiny. To others looking on, this may seem like a pointless endeavor, but for him, the chance to act on his desire to disappear must have meant a lot. Never forget that even when we walk beneath dark clouds along a road filled with suffering, the light of wisdom is always there, guiding us toward a better destination. And that is what you have been doing all along. Yeah, Nahida's right. Cheer up! How about we go get something to eat? We can pick up this heavy conversation again later. Good idea. Paimon, why don't you take him out for a walk to clear his head? You got it! Come on, Traveler! You need to get out of your head for a while. You'll feel much better after taking a walk. Let's go get a snack for one of the stalls in the Grand Bazaar! That'll be sure to lift our spirits! It must be really tough being the only one who remembers all that. But Paimon's always here to help cheer you up. Everyone hold hands! We're here! What should we eat first? Figured it all out? Oh, yeah. I think that was the thing because someone else has to erase the character. Excuse me, boss. There seems to be a small problem with the last bill. Look, here. Are you kidding me? He's just, just here. One day, you know. Huh? Are you kidding me now? Hey! Hey, 
Hey, wait! Hmm? You mean me? No, not you. That kid! Didn't you see? Little rascal grabbed my last two fresh Sunsetias and ran off. Look, if you're gonna help out here, you can't keep spacing out, okay? What is it? The work's too boring for you? Or has the big city got too many distractions? Are you kidding me? He just reset his seems to be some kind of nice guy. Are you kidding me? I wasn't paying close enough attention. Sorry, boss. I think you're right. Maybe it's the city. It's so exciting. It can be hard to focus. Who's that guy? You know him or something? He's who? You're a strange one, kiddo. You say you don't want any money for helping out here, and then when I actually give you some work to do, you keep letting yourself get distracted. I don't want to take advantage, so I'm happy to pay you what I'd pay anyone else. But if you keep acting like this, pretty soon I won't be able to afford to. No, no, please. I mean it. You don't need to pay me anything. I'm just so thankful you agreed to take on an outsider like me. You're welcome, I guess. But I got bigger things to worry about. Look, we're all out of Sunsetias. And I promised the lady down the street I'd deliver a fruit bowl this evening. Uh, leave it to me. I'll find some more. Just a moment. I'll be right back. Stop. <sighs> I'm gonna level with you, kiddo. I've never met a worker who said they didn't want a wage before. And at first, I got greedy. Couldn't believe my luck. But I figured you'd start asking for something in return eventually. You don't want money. You don't take days off. And in your free time, all I see you do is wander around, taking in the sights. Are you a... a drifter or something? That's right, I am. We can talk more about that later. First, let me get those fruits you needed. Sunsetius, was it? I'll be right back. Hey, what do we do now? Please don't be a stealth mission. That literally doesn't make this quest the worst one. Okay. Oh, I know, man. Shoot. Where'd he go? Yeah, this'll do. Even though you say he's the balladeer, what are we planning on doing? Stealing his sunsetias? Isn't that a bit too cruel? All right. This should be enough. Hmm. Ah, guess I should wash them before I take them back. Tabala, this is Delt's ex machina. Huh? You two over there. Is there something I can help you with? Okay, I'm really curious if he actually. <laughs> Hide his... Actually, no, because I saw his trail. He seems to be the same character, but try to not kill them, to say. <laughs> he spotted us! Very, very fine, man. You've been following me all the way from the city. I'd have to be blind not to notice. Ah, <sighs> have we met before? No, we haven't met. But you know me? I have no recollection. Uh, are you absolutely sure? Sorry, but I just can't take your word for it. Puppet? What makes you think that? Huh? <gasps> you were right! The look on his face! 
I guess you do know me after all. That is not something I share with a lot of people. Look, I'm just a wanderer. But seeing as you've gone through all this trouble to track me down, I'm sure whatever it is must be important. Okay, but please let me deliver these goods to my boss first. Are you really working for that guy? He said you don't want any more for it. Is that... Yes, I ran into him out in the wilderness during a storm. And he let me take shelter in his cart. In return, I said I'd be his helper for a while. That's oddly nice of you. Let me take these back. Then I'll come with you, okay? Then let's return to the city. Here you go, boss. I'll leave them right here. Oh, you really went and picked some more. Hmm. Who are these two? Something's come up, and they need to borrow me. Sorry, boss. I'm afraid I'll be away from the stall for a while. <sighs> I was just about to pay you anyway. Go wherever you want, kid. Don't waste your time here. What? I get it, okay? You just wanted to help me out, to thank me for giving you shelter from the rain that day. Even then, I don't understand why you're so adamant that you don't want any pay for it. But look, it was pouring down, and there you were, sauntering along without a care in the world, like you had nowhere to be and didn't even care that it was raining. Imagine you were me for a second. It's a little weird, right? Why is this guy traveling during a rainstorm if he's not trying to get somewhere? And why is he taking a shortcut through the open country if he's not even in a hurry? Uh... But anyway, taking you in didn't put me out even slightly. You don't owe me a thing for it. Certainly not all this. Your time is valuable. You know, you should go live your life. But I don't... No, you're right. Then I suppose this is where we say goodbye. Thank you again for taking me into the city. Don't mention it, kiddo. I've run into all kinds of characters over the years. I just hope you find your path. Thank you. All right, done. Thanks for waiting for me. We can go now. <laughs>